everybody doing under the circumstances? We're doing well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay. And as you know, because we don't have a minion, we're not going to say cottage here. I'm going to say cottage for the first time then at the okay. mid afternoon service. Thank you. Marty and I now dull, you know, so we're going to have this. Okay. to begin by reciting several chapters from the Book of Psalms that are typically read at the funeral of a good and just person, as was Joel Hedricott. Psalm 1, Hashrei Ha'ish, Asher Lo Halach, Biatzat Rishaim, Uvderech Ataim Lo Amad, Uv Moshav Leitzim Lo Yashav, Bechataim ba'adat tzadikim ki yodei Adonai derech tzadikim v'derech reshaim toved. Happy is the man who has not followed the counsel of the wicked, nor stood in the path of sinners, nor sat in the company of the scornful. Rather, that one's delight is in the Torah of the Lord, meditating in God's Torah day and night. And he will be like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in season, whose leaves will not wither, and whatever that one does prospers. Not so the wicked who are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked shall not survive judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord loves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Psalm 15. Mizmor le David, Adonai, mi agur bi ohalecha, mi yishkon behar kotchacha, holech tamim ufoel tzedek, vidover emet bilvavo, lo ragal al lishono, lo asal reyehu raa vicherpa lo nasa al kirovo, nivza beinav nimas, vid yere Adonai yechabed, nishpa le aravalo yamir, kaspo lo natan beneshech, Bishokad al naki lo lakach, o se ela lo yimod le olam. Mismor le David, a song of David, Lord, who may sojourn in your tent, who may dwell on your holy mountain, one who walks in purity, does what is righteous, and speaks the truth from the heart, who has no slander on the tongue, nor has done harm to a fellow, nor cast disgrace toward a neighbor in whose eyes a contemptible person is repulsive, but who honors those who are in awe of the Lord, who swears truthfully even to personal hurt and never retracts, who does not lend money on interest, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. One who does these things shall never falter. I'm now going to read Psalm 23, and I'm going to give all of us the opportunity, if we'd like to, read the English then together, which you'll find in the pamphlets. Mizmor le David, Adonai ro'i lo echsar, bin ot dashe yar pitseni al me menuchot yena aleni. Nafshi yeshove v'yancheni v'mag le tzedek leman shemo. Kam ki eilech begeit salmavet lo irara, ki ata imadi. Shiftecha umishantecha hema yena chamuni. Taroch lupanai shulchan neged sorarai, di shanta vashemen roshi kosi rivaya, ach to vachesed yer defuni kol yemei chayai, vishafti bevet adonai li orech yamim. And in the inside of the pamphlets, Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the paths of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Although I did have the opportunity on several occasions to meet your uncle and your brother-in-law, um, I never really got to know him, and I rely really on the notes that I took on my conversation the other day to learn more about your uncle. So I'm going to share then a few words. One of the more popular tractates in the Talmud is known as Pirkei Avot, Chapters of Our Fathers. And these have really sage insights for many of the Tanaim, many of the rabbinic sages uh, who lived around the turn of the millennium till about the year 210 or so, at the time of the publication of the Mishnah. One of them, his name was Ben Zoma. And he asks a series of rhetorical questions, and I'm going to just ask one of them. So in the name of Ben Zoma, Ezehu Ashir, who is considered to be a who is considered to be a wealthy person, and his answer is very simple: Hasamech bechalko, somebody who is happy in his own lot in life. And I think that this describes really your uncle. Uh, Joel, uh, that he was a man who was happy in his own lot, that is, with what he had and not that which he lacked. And in speaking with you, I would say that he was dedicated to his family, his parnasa, we would say, in earning a living, being independent, faith, Judaism, and country, the United States. First, really, his family. He was the devoted son of Julius and Naomi Fabricant of blessed memory, and he was predeceased by both of his brothers, Dennis, many years ago, and your dear dad, husband, Arnie, Arnold, uh, just less than a year ago. Joel and Arnie were extremely close. Now, we're at the beginning parts, really, of the book of Exodus, and in the book of Genesis, uh, it doesn't start out good in terms of the relationships between brothers. We learn about Cain and Abel, and their strained relationship and jealousy led to Cain slaying Abel. We learn of Isaac and Ishmael, Isaac who continued as the progenitor of the Jewish people, and Ishmael who went on to lead really the Arab nation and the strain in their relationship. And of course, the twins, Jacob and Esau, and highlighted then perhaps by Joseph and all of his brothers with the exception of the same full brother, and that is Benjamin. At the end of Genesis, we kind of see a turn in the tide of relationships with brothers, with Ephraim and Manasseh, the two sons of Joseph, where for the first time when a uh, younger brother received what was usually considered an entitlement for the Bechor, the oldest brother, Instead of lashing out, the older brother uh, accepted what was given to him, and that was the blessing of the second son. And things turned a little bit at that time. In Exodus, we see the harmonious relationship between Aaron and Moses. We just finished celebrating Hanukkah. We learn about the unity, really, of the brothers, the Chazmonim, the Maccabees. And I would put Arnie and Joel in the category of being very close and sharing really with each other. Um, and I'm gonna just put an analogy here really in a similar way. And I, um, it almost seems in many families at least, there is a uncle or aunt who never got married, who didn't have children. And uh, it's not necessarily natural for the sibling who has children and a wife or spouse to share really his family with the other sibling. Um, and your father, of course, 
was very generous in sharing his family with Joel, his house with Joel. He made Joel feel a part of the family in what we would call in Hebrew a ben bayit, somebody who is always comfortable in the home. And he really looked forward to spending time together, whether it be over holidays or Thanksgiving in your home uh, or celebrating different times together. And he was that way really more than just an uncle in terms of the way he considered uh, both his sister-in-law, Wendy, and then of course his nephew, Sam and Charlie and Colleen and his great niece, Lily. And I don't have to tell you, but I know that you were close with him and that he looked out for you, gave you special gifts really throughout your life. Arnie and Joel enjoyed each other's company, enjoying such activities as uh, attending together Northwestern sports events. And so I chose to wear my Northwestern cap and also my uh, helmet liner underneath it. Um, and also to follow Chicago sports teams on TV and print media. Um, both very bright men um, and intellectually uh, curious they uh, enjoyed sharing articles of current events together, reading them and then discussing them. Joel was, as you shared with me, a history buff, enjoying reading and discussing world history from ancient times to more modern times of World War II. He was quiet, unassuming, kind and compassionate to all, though beginning with his family, with being generous with both his time and his material resources. Endowed with a huge heart, Joel enjoyed helping others, whether it be helping someone move, picking something up in a store for somebody else. He was there. Joel was a, we would say, a go-to person, someone on whom you could always count. In addition to Arnie, Wendy, Sam, and Charlie and family, Joel was also very close with his cousins Stanley and Judy Pollock. Karnasa, he dedicated his life, as I mentioned, to family. The second item was what we call in Hebrew Parnassa, earning a living, a very bright man. Joel was a graduate of the University of Iowa, where he studied journalism, and he had a successful career in sales. An important part of his life was his faith. He had great respect for Judaism. He was a proud Jew. Raised in a traditional Jewish home by parents who emigrated from Eastern Europe, Joel was a proud member of the Jewish community. For the last chapter of his life, he was active at Chabad, regularly attending Shabbat and Yom Tov services. Joel treasured the opportunity that he had to travel to and visit Israel. The fourth component, really, of his life dedication was to his country. And it's kind of interesting that his funeral is right now at the time of an inaugur a presidential inauguration. He was a proud patriot of the United States, having served in the Vietnam War. And upon his return from service, he became active in the Jewish War veterans, serving as commander to the Jewish war veterans post 800. I want to return now to the statement that I had at the beginning of the Tana, the scholar, the rabbinic scholar, Ben Zoma. He again asked the rhetorical question and gave the answer, Ezehu Ashir, who is wealthy, hasamech bechalko, someone who is uh, satisfied, who is happy in his lot of life. Then he goes further and gives a proof text and an interpretation of this text. And the text he gave is from the book of Psalms from where we just read at the outset of the service. And he said, Shenemar, as it states in the book of Psalms, Yegia kapecha kitochel ashrecha vitov lach. You shall enjoy the fruit of your labors. You shall be happy and you shall prosper. And then he interprets it, Ashracha be'olam hazeh, v'tov lach le'olam haba. You shall be happy, that refers to in this world, 
that you shall prosper refers to olam haba in the world to come. We are confident that Joel Fabricant was happy in this world. And now as he begins his new chapter of life in olam haba, the world to come, our role as his survivors is to ensure that Joel's legacy lives on and on. We accomplish this in part by incorporating into our lives the many fine, wonderful Mito character traits by which Joel lived and dedicated his life to. Tehei Nishma Joel Ben Yechaskel Ben Ami Tzura Mitzra Chaim. May the Nishama of Joel Faberkant, the son of Julius and Naomi, be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. Before we prepare now for the burial, I'm just going to recite the Kelmale, the memorial prayer. El male rachamim shochein b'meromim hamtsehem inuchan echon al kantve ashvina v'maalot kedoshim utorim kezoar harakiha mazirim ed nishma jol ben yecheskel shalach liolamo Ba'avur shanachnu mitpalulim biyad azkarat nishmato Began eidat tehem enuchato Lachahin bal harachamim yasti rehu Beseter knafav leolamim Ve'yitzror mitzrachim enishmato Adonai hu nachalato Ve'yanuach v'shalom ha'mishkavo V'nomar amen O God, full of compassion, you who dwell on high Grant proper repose on the sheltering wings of your presence In the lofty levels of the holy and pure Who shine as the brightness of the firmament Unto the neshama, the soul of Joel Faberkant Who has gone to his world and for whose memory we pray. May his repose be in paradise. May the master of compassion bring him under the cover of God's wings and bind his neshama, his soul, in the bond of life. May the Lord be his heritage, and may he repose on his resting place in peace. And let us say, Amen. We're not going to have the arrow, the casket lowered, and we're going to uh, continue then with the the actual burial, and after that, uh, the faith has been filled. Out of respect, we wait to say that the final prayers, uh, which in this case will be the Tzidu Kadin, as I mentioned, because there is no minion, the first Kaddish will be said at Mincha, which I, again, assume that responsibility, or that honor, I should say, to say Kaddish at that time, but also then throughout the 11 month period that we say for a somewhat who is Oops. Okay. It's uh it's okay because I have it all.
of respect to Joel, we fill the grave completely, and we are asking now the assistance of the cemetery staff, after which then uh, we're going to recite the final prayer, which is known as Sidu Kadin, uh, which is really carries the theme of no matter how great our grief may be at this time, we reaffirm our present Sur Tamim Koalo ki kol de Rafa bishvat el emuna bien avel tzadik di asharhu. At Sur Tamim bechol koal mi yomar lo matifal hashalit pemata uvmal nimit umchayev mori cheo vayal. At Sur Tamim bechol maase mi yomar elav matase ha omer biosa chesed kinam lanu tase. Thank <laughs> Blessed is God, for God's judgment is true. God scans everything with God's eye and recompenses the person according to the account and the just sentence. And all must give God's name acknowledgement. Baruch Hu, 
True judge, judge of righteousness and truth. Blessed is the true judge, for all of God's judgments are righteous and true. Nefesh kochai v'yadecha, tzedek mala yimikha v'yadecha, rachim al pleitat son yadecha, v'tomar la malach, heref yadecha, kidol ha'itza v'rav ha'aliliya asher inecha v'kukot, al kol darchei v'nei adam, latet le'ish kidracha v'chitri malalav, le'hagit ki asher adonai tzuri v'lo avla tabo, adonai natan v'adonai lakach v'yishem adonai v'vorach, to declare that the Lord is just, my rock, and there is no wrong. The Lord has given, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And God, the merciful one, will forgive iniquity and not destroy, frequently withdrawing anger, not arousing the entirety of God's range. And really, just to give the concluding words um, of the Kaddish and also the Amida, O seh shalom b'mramav hu yaseh shalom alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'maru amen. God who makes peace upon the godly heights, may God make shalom peace upon us and upon all Israel, and let us respond. Amen. Uh, we... Uh, we hope that we will meet at Smachot, at Simchas, at joyous occasions, and we wish everybody a good health and we should all be safe. This concludes our service. Those of you who are on the live stream, you're more than welcome to please make contributions in Mr. Fabricant's memory to the Jewish War Veterans, post number 800. The address is on our website. Our service is now concluded.